Good evening. My name is David Boster. I'm with Score Bucks County. Uh, and welcome to Wednesday webinar. Tonight we're part four of our six part series on digital marketing. Tonight, as you can see from the screen, we'll be focusing on business to business network networking platforms, primarily focusing on LinkedIn. Just a few little housekeeping type things. Uh, one, we are recording the the whole presentation at the end, after we're finished. Maybe tomorrow, then it'll be put on YouTube. I will send you all a link uh, to view that. So if you worry that you missed something, you'll be able to go back and 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 reference it over and over again. Um, without any problem. Uh, the second thing is that there is a box someplace on your screen where you can type out questions. So during the presentation, if you have a question, just write it out. I'll see it. And at the end, we'll go through them. And uh, Brandon has agreed that he'll spend as much time as he needs to answer all of your questions, so no, don't fear. So I'm very, very, and we're all very excited to have Brandon Schaefer with us tonight to speak about uh, this topic. I could go through Brandon's entire resume and experience, but it would eat up our whole time here. I think the way you get a sense of his experience and knowledge will be through his presentation, which which speaks for itself. So without any further fanfare, I, I turn the proceedings over to Brandon. Uh, thank you so much. It's great to be here, and uh, I appreciate your kind words in the intro. So tonight, um, like Dave said, it's business-to-business -business networking platforms. We have Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter. But for tonight, we're primarily going to focus on LinkedIn. Okay, and we're going to talk about building your professional network, data mining, meaning pulling information out of LinkedIn and these social channels, enhancing your reputation, um, and generating leads. So, let's switch over to the page here. Give me one sec. Okay, so like I said, we, we there's three primary uh, platforms that we that we like to focus on. We have LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram. So what's what's important about LinkedIn? So LinkedIn helps you build relationships, right? And make new contacts. That's what and make and make new connections, right? It's a great place to leave comments, to engage with your peers in conversation, right? That's primarily what we use LinkedIn for. But in this context, when we get into these next slides, we're gonna talk about using LinkedIn to get new business, to build new relationships. Uh, we also have Twitter, okay? Twitter's more of a blast your message out there um, type of network, but it's a great place to build authority where you can build helpful and useful links back to your website, right? So anytime you can build authority and drive people back to your website where you have opt-in forms or calls to action, um, it's an excellent, excellent thing. Twitter also allows you to have um, to do detailed keyword searches or keyword phrase searches as well as engage with like-minded peers. It's a great place to give a shout out to somebody that you might not know because typically they'll, they'll respond back if it's not somebody who has, you know, 400 bazillion followers. And, and lastly, Instagram, okay? So Instagram um, is a relative, I don't want to say new, but in, in the market compared to LinkedIn and Twitter, it is one of the newest um, platforms out there. It's a great place to share images and engage in short conversations based on based on what you share. So uh, Instagram is great for showing behind the scene photos. It's great for saying, "Hey, are, uh, let's welcome our new employee, Jake or John or or or, or Sarah." You know, any of those types of things. Um, so, but I said, for now, we're going to go on LinkedIn. We're going to take a deeper dive right now. And before we go any further. Right? When you think of social channels, I'll debunk the myth for you right now. What, they, what you think they're used for most likely isn't. You need to think of, a so, of the social channels as ways to extract information, 
use the social channels to pick the low-hanging fruit. Imagine walking by an apple tree and there's an apple standing right there, right? The apples for your sales and for, and, and for your new customers are right there in front of you by using these platforms. You just need to get on and start using them properly to be able to reach your hand up and grab that low-hanging fruit, all right? So I always say this before I start anything. Don't be overwhelmed. It can get overwhelming to think about this, to try to be the best thing on every network. It gets overwhelming, okay? Um, what I usually recommend is pick one platform, right? And I think LinkedIn to this audience is probably the best platform to, to select this time. Uh, pick the best one that's going to give you the best chance to get in front of your target audience and give it a try. Don't go all in with anything. You're not going to walk to Atlantic City and put down all, all, all your money on red on, on the roulette table. Okay? You've got to spread things out a little bit. All right? And then the biggest thing that you can take away is learning what works for you. This is so huge. You've, 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 you've got to fail to learn, right? And you've got to succeed to learn. But if you're, if you're not trying, nothing is going to happen. So don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to test things out. All right, and and just do them for short segments of time. Look at the analysis, and then or or review the data and see what's working versus what's not working. So, why does your business need to be on LinkedIn, and and why is it more important than ever? Right, uh, because people want to follow and engage with companies that are sharing relevant, helpful, and useful content. Right. So, if your company is sharing something useful, like a law changes in some type of in, in, in some type of industry, and you're going on LinkedIn and you're saying, hey, this law has changed, and this is why you need to do things this way, or this is how you can do things better. That's being a value. So you want to be a value and position yourself as the authoritative resource in that subject. All right? Also, companies that engage and inform their audience aren't selling. Right? So we never want to be hard selling. We, we don't want to have a, 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 a sledgehammer in our hand. What we want to be doing is providing information that piques people's interest in our target market. All right? And then we want to build relationships that will eventually lead to either partnerships or sales. Okay? Um, LinkedIn also has the largest numbers of professionals to connect with, to gather information with, and to share information with each other. All right? So those are three really, really important things. All right? And here's some, this is, this is all going to the same topic of why LinkedIn's important. LinkedIn helps you get the word out. It also helps you provide um, vet, links back to your website, okay? So when I say links back to your website, if you create content, right, on, on, on your blog or on your website, uh, um, a, original content, and then you go over to LinkedIn and you share that out as a social post. Say, so here's some original content that I wrote on this topic, okay? Um, it actually... It, it actually will help you drive people back to your site because they'll see what you're sharing online and then they'll click through and go back to your site. I know I mentioned this before. Uh, and one of the most valuable things is listen for market specific breaking news and market segment trends, right? So everybody's sharing different stuff on LinkedIn. Every major company is on LinkedIn. Every major person in business is on LinkedIn. They're sharing information. This is all low-hanging fruit. So if a new company is launching a new product and your product or service has something to do with that product, you're going to be in great shape, okay? So use LinkedIn to listen, all right? And then that goes right, it goes hand in hand with following the brands and companies um, by staying up to date with what they have going on. And that's just, just what I was saying before is, you know, You've got to be in touch, right? Everything to do is is how much information you can gather, right? So in this sense, if I'm going after a company to get to, if I'm trying to break into a company, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to follow their LinkedIn page, right? The second thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to check my connections to see if I'm connected to anybody that works at that company already, right? Just a mishap. I know I, I have a ton of connections. I don't know them all just because I've, I've received a lot of connections. And you can also see second and third degree connections or this person is connected to this person. So although they might not be in your original 
it, it, they, they, may, they may not be a first party question. You'll be able to say no in a third party and maybe be able to ask them for a warm handoff or something else like that. All right. Um, so hold on one sec. Let me just switch to the next slide here. All right. So the first piece, how to build a professional network on LinkedIn. Okay. LinkedIn, your profile is your front door to your house. It's your lawn. So you need to make sure that your profile is up to date and has every area filled out in full, right? It's like when someone pulls up to your driveway, are your hedges trimmed? Do you have a nice mailbox? Is it painted white? Is it here? What does it look like? This is your first impression, right? Don't be shy here. LinkedIn has tons of different areas to fill in uh, parts of expertise. Are, are you part of a nonprofit? Are you part of Boy Scouts? Are you part of Girl Scouts? Are you part of what, what are, uh, some type of community development program? And go through every single section on LinkedIn and fill that out in full, 100% to the best of your ability. All right. The other piece is, again, I know I mentioned this before, but I'm just, I'm just going to say, share, share helpful and useful articles that you found. It can be original content, right, that, that you form, or if you find a great article, people do it on Facebook all the time. They see a nice article or a nice picture and they reshare it. You're doing the same thing, but on LinkedIn, you're not sharing a picture or of something funny. You're sharing something. That, that can relate to your target, target audience. So it doesn't have to be something original that you share. It just has to be helpful and useful to your target audience. Okay. And then you, what you want to do is you want to share that out at least three times per day. So once in the morning, once in the afternoon, and once at night. Okay. Because everybody's in different time zones here. Well, most people are in different time. No, we're 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 all in in the um, Eastern time zone, most likely on here. But your audience, your market segment across the country or across the globe are all on different times. So you want to give your shot, you, you want to give your chance itself. You want to give yourself a chance to have a shot to get your content seen. You don't want to share any content all the time, day, over day, day after day, but you want to share different content. So maybe one piece is your own content, driving people back to your blog, and two others are other expert pieces of content that, that you found that may be useful. All right, and then um, you want to comment on what people that you're following um, on on what they share. So if you find something like if you're going after somebody on, after a certain company and you see an employee from that company shared something, why not take two seconds and go on there and say, "Hey, I love the content. This is fantastic. Do you usually share content? Engage in conversation, or what do you think about this?" Right. So you're just asking a question to engage, right? And it works, it, it works absolutely perfect. So again, follow those companies that you want to do business with and brands and comment on, on, on what they share and reshare their articles, right? And then you can leave a little tidbit like, hey, I love this article that, that this company wrote so-and-so. Um, I think you ought to read it, you know, so, stuff like that. Um, we also have send personal invitations to connect, right? And uh, Dave and I were talking about this before we started here, but you don't want to send out a ton of these personal invitations. You want to send out specific targeted um, invitations to people that you want to connect with for strategic reasons, right? And it's not everybody that you want to do business with. It's, it's people that may support the businesses that you want to do business with because of the whole underbelly here, all right? So don't be afraid to send out a personal invitation. Don't send the standard LinkedIn invitation though that says like, um, hey, I'd like to connect with you. Take two seconds and write a personal thing. Hey, I saw you share this article. I really enjoyed it. I'd love to connect with you. And I'm going to be at this event, which event in the future where you're probably going to be. We ought to connect in person, right? That will get you a 99% exception rate and it, will, and it will give the opportunity to get your foot in the door with that company. All right. The other thing is LinkedIn groups, right? So there are a ton. This is this is one of the LinkedIn gems. I call it LinkedIn groups. If you go to LinkedIn, you put in groups and you search for for groups, and you put a specific keyword in there, which whichever market segment you're in, you'll find a ton of groups. I think there was like sixty-five thousand groups. Don't exactly quote me on that, but there's a group for everything. Join the group. Get involved in conversation. The one thing I will say is don't go into a group and just start posting your stuff. 
go into a group, you just follow the conversations, answer the questions. Start answering the questions, start engaging with people inside that group, and then you can start sharing some of your content. But it's not, when you show up to a group, don't just show up to share your stuff. And I see people do this all the time. I've made this, this, this mistake myself years ago, and I just showed up and said, okay, I'm just going to start sharing my stuff. It's not about that in groups. It's about asking questions. It's about answering questions. It's about being helpful and, and useful to people. All right, and then the last piece is um, follow the follow the LinkedIn company page. So every every company, or mostly every company, has a company page where they share stuff out. It's an easy way for you to follow and keep up to date and keep an eye on um, a company that you want to do business with. So I definitely recommend all those things. Um, all right, so let's move into to data mining. So data mining can be a bad word in some cases, right? We think of data mining, we think, oh, sneaky, sub, uh, a submarine search or, or something like this, right? Every company out there is data mined. The bigger companies, data mine, they, they have so much information that, that they know, I, I, I don't even want to go into it all, but this can be a totally different um, uh, session for us on data mining, but I'll just touch I'll just I'll just touch on this topic here, okay? So when we want to go to LinkedIn, right? We'll just we we, we want to go to LinkedIn to find people that we can connect with, to find people that we can sell new items to, or or at least form form new types of relationships with, strategic partnerships and relationships. So what you can do when you go to LinkedIn is there's a main search bar in the top left corner. You can search any keyword or put any keyword phrase in there that may be of interest interest to you. All right. All types of different topics will come up. So if I'm looking for um, software developer, right? If I type that in, anybody with that job title, software developer, is going to come up. Any article that's written is going to come up. Any company that has that in, in their in their um, in, in 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 their description is going to come up. So I recommend that everyone go to LinkedIn once we once we hang up or once once we get off. Kind of mess around with some of these tools. You can circle back. I'll, like I said, I'll answer any of these questions to you. But you can also refine your search on LinkedIn, right, by people, by jobs, by posts, by companies, by groups. You can you can see who's in whose group and by schools. You can do it by nonprofits. Um, with and these are all free. This is all 100% free. Now LinkedIn has changed a lot as of recent so LinkedIn now, a lot of the things they used to give away for free is now charging. So if you want to search more on company size, on on uh, re revenue per year, stuff like that, there's a paid for version that you can use. It's seventy dollars per month. I don't. I I I go with the free version. Um, I don't know if you need to get that in depth, but I'm just throwing it out there in case you need to get um, for, further refine your searches. All right. You're going to want to use that. You're going to want to use that search bar to search for companies by keyword, by location, as well as by industry. Okay. So if I'm looking for people in the manufacturing industry, I'm going to put manufacturing Pennsylvania. And I'm going to have a whole list of companies come up. Manufacturing Bucks County. I'm going to have a whole bunch of of, um, of businesses to come up. I'm going to have a whole bunch of people. I'm going to have some jobs to come up. So if you just scroll down that page, if you just enter the info, if you just put your keyword, a keyword phrase in that top left search bar, and then you scroll down the page, you'll see all different segments of everything. But you got to scroll down the page. All right. Um, also. One easy way, I talk about that low hanging fruit, right? We're walking by that apple tree, we see the fruit, when a, and a fruit, piece of fruit hits us in our head and, and we walk right by, we don't even know. If we just sit back and listen to conversations on LinkedIn, you will find sales, without a doubt, because people are always asking, what, who's the best coffee vendor to use? Who's the best phone vendor to use? I'm switching to an IP-based phone system. Who do I use? These, are, these qu types of questions get asked all day long on LinkedIn, and especially they get asked in groups, right? So if you go, in, if you're if you're in a specific group, because people feel a little more comfortable, they don't feel as much as as exposed enough as as much. So they're asking questions because they need help. So it's like a forum. So if you can just go on LinkedIn for say, I I, I know everybody has different schedules here, but if you can go on LinkedIn for maybe spend 15 minutes in the morning. And then another 15 minutes before you go to bed at night or something like that. And you don't have to do this every day, but just listen for conversations. Put the keywords in and, and go, go, go to your groups that you've joined. Just listen. You'll find 
opportunities come. 100% you'll find opportunities that come. Also, again, follow the company pages. Everything that you want to know about a company that you're trying to break into, they typically share on their LinkedIn page, right? They're sharing that they're opening up, up a new location in um, North, North Beach or wherever it is, right? They're sharing all types of information, right? So if you're if you're selling um, widgets or phones or whatever whatever the heck it is, and 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 you know they're opening up a new location, um, it's a great time to reach out to them. Hey, I saw on LinkedIn, and you always want to use LinkedIn. I saw on LinkedIn that you were opening up this new location. That usually that usually means that you're going to be in the market to buy this new widget or a XYZ that, that, or, 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 or product or service that you sell. And it's a great time to reach out to them, okay? You can search on LinkedIn for that person's name, for the, for, for, for the purchasing agent or the um, buyer or whatever else like that through keywords, and then you can reach out to them with that type of message. Um, okay, so that's pretty much data mining. So my big suggestion on data mining, on data mining is using that search bar. All right, so let's go on to using LinkedIn to enhance your reputation, right? When I say reputation, it means build your authority, right? Everything you want to do, again, with reputation, it's everybody needs good, it's a great reputation to have, it's fantastic. To be an influencer in your market segment, to be the authoritative resource. When Johnny or Joe or Sally needs to know something about this topic, they reach out to you, and they also tell their friends, hey, oh my goodness, when their friends ask them, or when they see somebody searching for something, they go, oh my goodness, Dave did a great job for me. Do business with Dave. That is called a warm handoff. That is social influence. That is one of the most powerful ways that people buy things today. It is almost, that's that's the way the world works, Pretty, pretty, pretty almost today for, 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 for sales. So it is so important to have a great reputation and to be their authoritative resource, all right? So how do we get to be that, right? How do we get our reputation built up if we don't have a reputation in business, if, if, we're, if, if we're not an influencer, if we're not, a, if, if, we're, if we're not the authoritative resource yet, right? We get that by creating content, right? The one great way, we need to create some articles or, or white papers around our business. And it's not about how great your business is, it's about what problems your business solves for companies in your market segment, right? So it's not about your business. The white paper isn't about how great of a job your, your company does. The business is about how there's a problem in accounting and how your product or service solves that problem in the accounting market segment. And you can do that for any for any type of segment. So you can do a whole what a complete white paper, or or if you 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 can do one article a week if you wanted to on your blog, right? And share that out. But just make sure it's very specific and it's talking to your market segment. You're not writing to sell popcorn to the world. You want to sell popcorn to the grandfather walking on the beach in Coney Island in July. You want to get that specific with the content you're sharing, all right? That's the first piece. The, the second piece is share, share, and share more information on your, on, 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 on your LinkedIn updates, okay? Not, like I mentioned this before, not only your original, not only your own content, but popular market-specific content that's relevant to your audiences, all right? You got to connect with people. Right, you got to connect with people and let them know who you are and what you do. And again, we're not getting the sledgehammer out and and do, and and doing those types of sales. What we're doing is we're reaching out. Hey, I'm going to be at that conference. Let's catch up for a minute. Let's talk. This is what I want to talk to you about. It's a soft sell, but it always has a strong call to action. Okay. Um, if you see a question that somebody is asking on on LinkedIn or anywhere on Twitter, on Instagram, on anywhere. Answer. Take two minutes. If you know the answer, take two minutes and answer that question. All right. Again, helpful, useful. Don't expect anything in return. Just answer the question. If you know a great coffee vendor, answer that question. Okay. Um, and what you want to do is you want to become the connector, right? I call this the connector. Like we all used to play with LinkedIn logs or whatever, or those things that that that, that, that actually connected together. Um, you want to become the person 
that when somebody's looking for somebody, when, when somebody's looking for something, you want that person to say, you ought to connect with this person I know because they can help you, right? And again, we're talking about the warm handoff here. Um, so let's go to the next page here. Give me one second. Okay. So I think this is the last, the last piece here, and we'll start to wrap things up. But how do you use LinkedIn to generate sales? Okay. This is why we're all here. We, 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 we butter the bread at this point. We need to add the sizzle to it, though. We need to throw in the frying pan. We need to put the cheese on there. And we need to make, and, and, and it's time to make the sandwich here. Okay? So how do we do that? Go through your connections, right? Connect with people through everything that we just did. You're going to form more connections. Go through your connections. Get an Excel spreadsheet. Get, get any type of sheet. Hand write it out if you want to. Put together a list of people in your target market that work for companies that you think can use your service or product. All right. Once you have that list, once you have that defined list, take the time and reach out to each one of them and ask them for an appointment. Okay. Um, don't be shy. But when you reach out to them, when you reach out to them and you're looking for an appointment, right? Reach out to them with a specific goal in mind, not saying, hey, again, there's nothing, never be bland about this. There's no vanilla in, in, in reaching out and generating sales on LinkedIn. If you're going to reach out to somebody, say, hey, I saw this change. I know it affects you in the mortgage industry. This is why I'm reaching out to you. I'm reaching out to you because this is the apparent problem that I, that, that I see. This is the product and service that we have that's 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 solving this problem, and this is what it can save you. So you're you're you're, you're always talking about direct. You're you're basically hitting them right in the forehead, and you're you're talking about something that directly affects their business and their pocket. All right. Um, we want to look for companies on look on LinkedIn looking to hire people for specific jobs. Again, you don't always want to enter through the front door. Sometimes you entering through the back door. If everybody's reading the same book and everybody's doing the same stuff, there's 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 no nobody's doing anything different. So here's a little bit different of a spin. I know some of you may do this already, but if you go on LinkedIn and you look for people searching for jobs or, or companies looking for jobs, you know they need help in that area. But they might not need to hire somebody full time. And if you have an outsourcing company that can give them two, three, four, five hours a week, complete that job. Why won't they do it with you, right? They don't have to. They, it's not, it's not going to cost them any more money to hire an employee. Um, you can, there's all types of benefits to that. So look for that type of um, look for those types of companies uh, that are posting jobs on LinkedIn, and then reach out to them. All right, and then always look for the warm lead. All right. So I, again, I I know I mentioned warm leads a lot. It's one of the most important important things. Social persuasion. Um, so, social confidence selling, stuff like that. When you meet somebody at a conference, ask them to connect. If you're, if you're sitting there at a conference, ask them to connect. Your phones are right there. Hey, we ought to connect on LinkedIn. It's not like, it, it, it's, it's, it doesn't have to be a formal thing, right? You're sitting there, hey, you look like a cool person. Let's connect. Or you look like we're in the same market segment. Or you know what? It'd be great to connect sometime. Let's, can, can I send you an invite real quick? Connect with them. Boom, you go in there, you immediately check the connect when you get back to your hotel or, 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 or your house or wherever you are. Um, you go through your connections, you see who they email, and again, you're further refining your target market to sell your services and products to. Um, let me see. All right, so the last piece here in, in, in this generating sales bit. So we're going to post updates or content that can help explain the benefits of utilizing your services or products. Okay. Now, who better to explain how good your products and services are than your customer, right? Then your happy customer. And we're going, we're leading right back into the social persuasion, the social selling, the warm handoff. So gather those testimonials. Have your best customers maybe write a 500, 800 word article for you and then share that out and mention them. Hey, um, John Smith wrote this article. He's a, big, he's, a, he's a big person in accounting. He works for this firm. He's very happy with our services. If he loves us, then you'll probably love us as well. Here's what we did for him. So again, social proof is one of the most powerful ways companies use to sell, all right? Larger companies do this all the time. If you watch now, after, after listening to this, 
you're going to see a lot of this going on. You see it on TV, you see it at conferences, you see it at meetings. It's, it's very, very important. And again, when people ask questions, how to do this, how to do that, if you know the answer, take 30 seconds and answer those questions. Once you answer the question, it's not, it's not taking the hammer out and hitting them over the head. It's simply, um, you may want to follow up. Hey, did this help? Did you try this? It's all in the follow-up. The fortune is in the follow-up, the follow-through. Everything that you do needs to be followed up on. And that's why I said, that's why I started to put together the Excel spreadsheet with this list. Because when you lay them all out in an Excel spreadsheet or a piece of paper or, or whichever way works best for you, you can follow up. Hey, talk to this person here. Talk to this person there. Need to follow up. So if you don't get a response, you're going to need to follow up and say, hey, or, or if you if you answered a question, it's a good idea to go back a week or two later and say, hey, how did this work for you? Right? <laughs> How many people actually reach back out to you? I know very few sales reps that actually reach back out to me, and will and will actually follow through and say, uh, even after even after I bought something, it could be something expensive. Even after I buy it, I rarely get a, 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 a note saying, "Hey, how's it going for you?" If you do that, you are ninety nine percent ahead of everybody else. All right. So let me just go to the last last page here, and we're going to wrap it up. All right. So. Just to wrap this thing up, people want to talk to people, right? They want to engage in authentic conversation and not be sold to. There's nothing worse than walking in to a place and you feel that you're being sold to. There's nothing worse. So how do we get around that? We get around that. We get around the selling by not selling. We get around to selling by being their authoritative resource in your niche, right? And that is, that's how you do that by writing good content, by sharing other people's popular content, and by answering questions. And your sales will definitely prosper. And that's it. I'll, I'll hang around. I hope you enjoyed it. I went 30 minutes. Um, I'll answer any questions that you have. I'll be more than happy. If I can't get to them all today, I'll be more than happy to talk to each one of you individually on, an, on, on, on another time or day. But um, I'll turn it back over to Dave now, and um, we'll open it up for questions. Are you there, Dave? Are you there? Give Dave a second here. We'll jump back on. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you now. Oh, okay. Um, anyway, yes. Uh, any thank you. I was saying for another fine presentation. Uh, do we have any question? Um, you can either write them. You also have the ability on your screen to click the little raise your hand uh, do dead, and I can unmute you if you want. But there is a question. Um, uh, uh, Brandon, Brandon, how how do we find how do you find groups on LinkedIn? Okay, so if you go to the top page, if you go to um, let me see here. Okay, so all the way, if you go to your top navigation bar on LinkedIn, and I hope everyone's on the latest version of of LinkedIn here. If if not, update or they I, you you should have been switched automatically. But there's a gray bar across the top. And it says there's the search bar on the left, and it says home, my network, jobs, messaging, notifications. It will have a little picture of you, and then it will have uh, nine little square boxes that says work there. So if you click on that little drop down where it says work, you'll see groups right there. You'll, you'll be able to see groups in the drop down. Just click on that little arrow that goes down next to work, and then you'll see the groups pop up right there, and you can look for groups. All right, thank you. I don't see any other questions. Oh, wait, thank you. Uh, question, I I am a massage, massage therapist. Most of my business will be local. How can I best apply these elements? How are the local people finding me? Excellent question. Yes, 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 yes. I don't, well, if you share, if you created um, some content around massage therapy, Right, like um, health tips or or best five six best foods to wake up and eat in the morning to um, help 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 your body keep high energy throughout the day. Um, 
you could do um, la la latest massage methods. Um, and if we, when you share that out, you got You have to share that out on 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 really your blog, and then you post that on LinkedIn. And then you got to go out and kind of share that information out, and, jo and maybe join a massage group on LinkedIn. And just talking about what that what what you do, you don't want to talk about exactly what what your service is right right off the bat. But if you can like go in there and start answering questions on groups, um, it's going to help you out a lot. As for the as for the local getting local, um, you could search massage in Philadelphia, massage in Bucks County. Right. Let me do a quick search here and just see, because this is live, so I'm not. Um, <laughs> this isn't queued up or anything. So, massage Philadelphia. I'm just typing in to see what 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 comes up. So, another great way is um, if you do massage Philadelphia, um, and you go in there and you see the companies. Here's a great thing to do: see what the companies that are in your similar market segment are doing on LinkedIn. And don't I I 100% believe in being authentic and everything else like that. But kind of if you see any of these having success with what type of content they're sharing or what type of messages they're sharing, be um, content around those types of topics because you know they're 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 hot topics. Um, but as for driving business, I'll need to get back to you on that exactly on LinkedIn. I know through ads, right, through paid ads on LinkedIn, you can get very specific with, say, anybody within the Philadelphia region within 20, within, within 25 miles or anybody within 10 miles of Bucks County that's interested in this keyword massage. But those are all through paid ads. So I can get back to Dave and he can circle back with you on, um, on ha ha how to do that for free. Yeah. Let me also just throw out there, Stacy, that uh, don't forget this this particular session is focused and everybody on business to business. So uh, I personally, I mean, you're going to find, if you're looking, obviously looking for customers, uh, you want to be on LinkedIn, of course, as a company, but but you need to have a good Facebook. And a good website, um, so that when people search, you know, go on to Google and, and search for um, therapeutic massage in wherever you are, that that you get a high. Um, I don't know what the term is. You come out up up near the top so they can find you. Mm -hmm. So, but 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 you know, certainly LinkedIn, following other companies, similar companies. As, as Brandon said, to, to see what they're doing is also very helpful. And joining groups. Join groups. Okay, I hope that helps. Um, here's another question. Um, uh, is LinkedIn, is a LinkedIn platform better for small business starting out compared to a Facebook platform? I'd suggest uh, well, okay, so, so the la I'm going to tie this into the last question because Facebook, and, and I know next week we're doing something on Facebook, which would be great. So if you're, in, if you're a small business and you're on here, get on for next week, next Wednesday at 7 for Facebook because I'll go over a bunch of ad stuff too. Well, it. it's not so, next Wednesday. It's two Wednesdays. Well, two, 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 yeah. two, two Wednesdays. Okay. Um, but so Facebook has a lot of opportunity to advertise to a very specific target market for a very very low cost. Okay, so you can go on Facebook and say, "I'm gonna, I want to reach anybody that's interested in health, fitness, massage therapy." Right? You put those three keywords in that lives in Bucks County, or within ten miles of Bucks County, and you can deliver them ads for basically pennies, a couple, a couple pennies. You know, if you spend ten dollars, you might get in front of, you know, a thousand different people that are in your target market right there. LinkedIn is a is a lot more expensive. You can run ads like that, but it's it's just a lot lot more expensive. But to answer the question with the with the whether it's to be on LinkedIn or Facebook, I think right now it's important to go on LinkedIn. I think it's vital to start building out your LinkedIn profile in full. But I also think it's important 
to have a Facebook profile and start to do that so you can run ads. So I recommend to do all of your networking, all of, the, all of your personalized touches and all, all, all this type of stuff on LinkedIn to really focus on LinkedIn, but use Facebook to run paid for ads. So I hope, I hope that makes sense. It's really just, just to sum it up, use LinkedIn like you did Facebook 10 years ago or five, or, or five years ago. You know, use Facebook for, 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 for your family, for your friends, but use LinkedIn to build your business. I hope that answered a little bit for you. Yes, thank you. Um, okay, another question. Uh, the, the person says, I think it's really important to not be sales intensive on LinkedIn. I have a connection who is constantly selling their product. How often should I be sales related and how often should I be informative percentage wise? Okay. That's it. That, I get that question all the time. Yeah. I think it's 10% selling, 90% in, in share, share, sharing informative information. Not only your own information, if you create a lot of content and you're good at and you're good at writing or you have a good writer, then you can create like 50, 60 percent of your own content, share you know 30 percent of other people's content, and then have a promo day like 10 percent. Um, that's that's fine, but really you it's you you're selling through your 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 you you don't when you're when when you create content and it's and it's engaging and it's hitting your audience right in the stomach, which stings them about about stuff that's 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 highly relevant and what's industry specific to them. They'll naturally come to you, so you don't need to send out those sales mail, those, those sales posts. Um, I don't like that. Like always, oh, hey, this is this is here, this is here. Buy this, buy. You know, like I want to read an article, a short article. I I want a nice headline. I want to read a short article. And then if it has a call to action at the end, like, hey, if this makes sense to you and you think I may be able to help you out, just send me a quick note. So I'd say selling 10, 20% of the time, even even closer to 10% of the time, and sharing other people's content 90% of the your, your own content and other people's content 90% of the time. Yeah, good. And just to augment that, um, I forget who asked it, but the whole idea, not the whole idea, but an important element of LinkedIn is the fact that you're in groups, you're following people, you're sharing information, you're giving information, and that is selling. It's selling in a much more subtle way. You're getting your message out. People see that you have some competence, and they're going to look to you when they, hopefully when they have a problem. Uh, the last question then is, um, Brandon, how can people get in touch with you via email and phone? Yeah, so I can sh I can share that out in, in the link that um, Dave sends out with the link to the actual uh, recording of this. Okay, I'll make good. sure yeah. that Dave includes my, my, my uh, personal email. And it's not just me. I mean, this is a SCORE event. So there are tons of mentors out there that in, in this local area that can help build your business, that can help you with anything you need. If it has to do with social media, I'm more than happy to spend time with you through SCORE and, 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 and do, donate my time and make sure that you get on the track to, to get all the help that you need. Great. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'll make sure we send out that link when we send out the mail. Well, yeah. I, want to th I want to thank, uh, again, Brandon, for his contribution. Thank you for attending, those of you that, that did, obviously. Again, I will send out uh, the link with the recording. Uh, stay tuned on your email. Next week, we have a special webinar on Where's the Money, where we'll, we'll be discussing all the various sources that are available for whether it's startup or for investing capital in your existing business. The week after that, which is the 29th, I think, will be Brandon back talking about Facebook. Until then, thanks again, and we're out. Thank you, Brandon. Oh, thank you. Are we done now? We're done. We're out. Oh, good. Okay. It looks like we ran on good time, too, which is, Perfect. Which is excellent. Perfect. Everything yeah. was great. Thanks.
Yeah, you're welcome, man. All right, so let's catch. I thought it was next week, so let's catch up at the middle of next week. Yes. And we'll get these slides together, and then we can do all that. So you can focus. So I'll wait until you're done with this next webinar yeah. next week, and then yeah. we'll, I'll put a note on Thursday or Friday to reach out to you. Yeah. And then I, I, if you want to share my email out, be feel feel free to share 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 that out and let them know anything that they need. Just they're more than welcome to send me a quick note. Will do. All right, thanks. All right, cool. I'll talk All right, to thank you. Thank you, man. Later. Yeah, good. Bye-bye.